This is hands down the absolute worst microphone I have ever reviewed. You could break it to a thousand pieces and I would feel no remorse. This is not, <laughs> this is not and should not be on your shelves. Walmart has released a condenser microphone, a super cardioid condenser microphone. And I just covered the microphone from Toner, which had their kind of like noise RTX button that I kind of like teased that it could be RTX. We obviously saw that it wasn't, but this microphone also says that it has a noise canceling button on it as well. You can customize the RGB and we're gonna see, does the Walmart, the Vivitar, which by the way, you can pick this up in stores at Walmart or order it. How good does it sound? Does it stack up to the competition? Oh, and by the way, I didn't even say it, $39.99 off the shelf. Let's take a look at it. Lightstream is the solution that you need if you are a console streamer. If you're wanting to be able to use professional overlays, put things that are on your stream and not have to have a PC to do any of the setup, you could do everything directly from your console and have a great looking stream, Lightstream is the service for you. Right now, you can use my coupon code DarkenCyrus to get 25% off your first three months of membership. And you can use that even if you already had Lightstream. Go ahead and see all the videos I've done on them in the past. I love that brand, go check it out. I fully support it. And uh, thank you to Lightstream for sponsoring this video. All right, I don't have a B cam or anything. Again, we're still moving and yeah, we're, we're just kind of going for it. So we're gonna unbox this and I'm gonna show it to you this direction so that you can go ahead and see it. Once again, this is the box. It's just Vivitar branding. It's their like yellowish green piece. Um, I will say their creator series, which is what this is from, is really impressive. If you want to see, they actually released a cam link that I covered, which was pretty awesome. And so I'm gonna hopefully just kind of cover everything. Let me know, do you want me to do like a full Walmart setup? Just the creator series and see what all we can get? I don't know, drop down in the comments. Would you like to see that? All right, inside the box, they're obviously gonna give you a little bit of promotional material, not that it's gonna focus on it, but a little bit of promotional material, uh, a quick, a quick start guide. I'll pull out the microphone in a second. We actually get USB-C to USB-A. So it looks like they're expecting that you're going to have a USB-A interface. No, I'm feeling around no USB-C to USB-A like converter, which is fine. Most people are gonna be using USB-A, even though today I'm doing all this on the Mac. So I'll have to get me a little, whatever changer thing adapter. Here's the mic itself. Let's go ahead and unpack it. It is most definitely plastic. Uh, everything about this is plastic. Now, what more would you expect for $40? And we can just spin it up and there it is. There is the Vivitar Creator Series microphone. We're able to choose what RGB is up here. We're gonna have to take a look at that here in just a moment. But what they have here is if they push this button in, apparently it will do the ambient noise. You can also touch to mute here, or they have a capacitive mute that you can just lightly tap. Kind of like most microphones are doing now, where you can just kind of lightly tap the top. All right, ports in the bottom. You do get a USB-C port, as well as a headphone port for direct monitoring of the microphone and also pass through like game sounds. So, all right, let us um, let me plug it in and let's take a look at some of this RGB. All right, well, that's plugged in and this is my first impressions. Uh, it looks like there's maybe four LEDs that I'm looking up in there. If I tilt this this way, you might be able to see exactly how that is. But it looks like there's some LEDs right up at the top and there's a color button here that's blue. Oh yeah, that's how you change it. So you got blue, green, this is like aqua. What color is this, Aston? Aqua. Aqua, 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 green purple, oh, and then you got like unicorn poop. All right, so we got the like rotating RGB. Um, oh, and you've got off, uh, and then you got all that, okay? So then I'm curious because this is like a blue light. I'm curious if when you mute, oh. So there's a little indicator here. When you mute, that'll go from blue to red but then whatever color you're also on, it will turn the mic to red as well. Those of you with like hyper quadcasts, whatever it is, the HyperX thing quadcast, 
you'll know that it's usually red and you mute it, it turns it off. So this is this will be interesting. So I guess the real question is, what if you're on, is red a color? Okay, so that's pretty cool. So if you wanted red, you can't get red, but red's not an option. So it doesn't matter what you're on, as long as you tap the top, you mute it. And I do know that you can push, yeah, you can push that in and also mute if this doesn't work. But this is really sensitive and that works really well. Um, I'm not too impressed with the uh, RGB. You can actually tell right here if you look very carefully, you can see like a wire that's maybe coming from the LEDs. That's kind of right behind the, the shielding that's right there, the diffusion. So it's not perfect, but you know, even behind my studio lights and all these lights and stuff, it's still showing up on camera, which is pretty good. So, all right. What you really want to know is A, does it work? How does it sound? And B, uh, what about this uh, ambient noise control? How great does it do? So let's do some sound tests. It doesn't look like this can go onto a boom arm. There's no like special mechanism to connect. So we're actually just going to do all of these directly from it sitting on the table. And you can see it right here. Um, we're going to do all the, the recording comparisons with it on the table because that's how you'll use it. You'll use use it. That's how you use it. All right, let's get into it. A couple things that I just discovered as I'm about to do these uh, like sound reviews. <laughs> These are, these are some weird ones. The blue light that's right here is the actual noise suppression. As I hold this in to turn off the noise suppression, the light goes off. So just know that the, when the light is on, noise suppression is on. Also, I forgot to mention there is an actual reverb button that you can actually, not button, but dial, that you can actually increase or decrease the amount of reverb right here that you wanna be able to use on the microphone. That's actually pretty cool to have a reverb knob here. And you see volume just above that. And then the gain knob, let me turn off that blue light. But then you see the gain knob. Now this gain knob isn't a normal gain knob. This volume knob bottoms out and has a top end. The reverb has bottoming out and has a top end. The gain knob freely continues to spin. And it's not one of those things where it has a stopper Maybe it's the unit I have, but it's a different dial altogether. And it's a little clicky. Here, I'll put it towards the microphone. It's a little clicky thing. And there's no indication of when you've maxed out, or when you haven't maxed out. I'm just gonna max it out and back it off a couple of clicks for all of these sound recordings. And uh, yeah, okay, let's record. All right, let's do some sound tests. Okay, so already going ahead and looking at this, the waves and the actual points, this microphone is gonna benefit from actually having it really close to your mouth. The problem is you don't have a boom arm, but I can go ahead and show you that this is gonna be where it is. So let's go ahead and put it on the table and let you hear what it's gonna be like from a table mounted position. All right, here it is just sitting on the table. This is the Vivitar Studio USB microphone. This is a sound test testing its sound. This is about six inches, maybe to eight inches away from the, my mouth of the sound source. And we're just testing for its sound. The noise cancellation button is off as well as reverb is turned all the way down. The gain is maxed all the way on this as well as on my computer. So this is what it would sound like with it being on the table in front of me. All right. And for context, this is the same microphone, same settings, but I'm actually getting it three inches away from my mouth. If you could put this on a boom arm, if you could figure out a way to actually rig this on a boom arm, this is what that microphone would sound like three inches away from my mouth. All right, we're going to take this keyboard. It is a membrane keyboard, but it's got some pretty loud switches. And we're going to put it in front of it, and we're going to go ahead and just do a one more sound test and then turn on that noise rejection from in front of the actual sensor to see how good it is. All right, so here we go. All right, this is a sound test. We were about eight inches away, and I have a keyboard actually tapping in between me and the source. So we can go ahead and see what it sounds like, how it's actually hearing before we turn on noise rejection. All right, now let's go ahead and turn that on. That little blue light will come on. And then once again, we're tapping again on the keyboard. Going ahead and speaking. This is again eight inches away, six inches away. We're just doing a sound test to see what that noise rejection looks like. 
All right, the next bit is gonna be a reverb test. I'm just gonna keep talking and then I'm gonna crank it all the way to 100. And then I'll go ahead and tell you that it's 100 and then turn it back down. All right, here we go. This is a sound test of the Vivitar Studio USB microphone. I'm currently turning up the reverb from its bottom all the way to the top. And I do believe I've just hit 100% reverb. This is what it would be like if you were using all of the reverb on the microphone. And now we're going to start like slowly, go ahead and turn it back down until we reach that zero, that bottom out of this dial, and we just reached it. We are back to no reverb on this microphone. And just for context and for kicks, uh, this is the microphone on reverb three inches away from my mouth. If I were to find a way to put it on a boom arm, this is what it would sound like. All right, I'm actually really curious, so let me go ahead and take a listen to these and get back with you on my thoughts. Real talk, the Walmart microphone. This is hands down the absolute worst microphone I have ever reviewed. And I am not joking. The sound quality, it needs a lot more gain. Maybe it's the unit I have. I have everything maxed and it's not even made to be on a boom arm and you can't hear it. And even at three inches away, if you go back and listen, the sound quality, it is really hot on the high ends. Not enough mids or lows. It just sounds, it just sounds like a toy. It sounds honestly like a toy. It sounds like something that I would I would probably feel really comfortable giving this to Hudson for his first microphone. He could break it into a thousand pieces and I would feel no remorse. And that's not me just like trying to crap on this microphone completely, but it is awful, okay? The reverb button, sure, is it a cool effect? Yes, but that 100% is like me singing in a massive echo chamber, like a huge silo, almost unusable. And as much as you touch this unit, there is, the moment you mute it, even though it's capacitive mute, oh my gosh, the smallest touch, because it's an all plastic body, you hear it all through the soundscape. The noise suppression, as you heard, was extremely sensitive to the point where it was a little too much. The noise suppression was so sensitive, it was almost like completely destroying the audio for it to work. Was it doing its job? Sure. Uh, but to the point where the audio is unusable? Totally. So if you're a person looking for a microphone and you're considering picking up the Walmart USB Studio mic, uh, I it highly recommend that you look at some other microphones. The Mayono mic that I just reviewed not too long ago, 25 bucks. The Fifine A6T you can pick up for, I think, 40, 45 bucks. A-Lab's Iron microphone that I just reviewed, I believe it's also 40 bucks. These are some great sounding microphones. Maybe not with as much of a feature set, but these feature sets give nothing to the quality of the microphone. If you can't even hear yourself, feature sets don't even matter. So the direct monitoring also had a really weird hiss and buzz to it. And I'm using nice in-ear monitors and I'm not using like a, a cheap set of headphones and they, it sounds bad. So my final verdict on this, I was actually really, Honestly, I was really looking forward to this. Aston's right here. I told her when I brought this home, I was like, this looks really cool. I can't wait to try this microphone. And I'm really disappointed, especially when I know that they put out something as fantastic of a quality from the same series as the Cam Link. I literally said it probably looks just as good, if not better than the actual Elgato Cam Link. And it has more feature sets and it just, for $20. So Walmart, Vivitar, this, this is not, <laughs> this is not and should not be on your shelves. It's my honest review. If you want to see some of those other microphones I talked about, I'm going to link that playlist right here with all of those microphones. Maybe I'll go ahead and put the Mayono mic, the cheapest mic I've reviewed on this channel, the cheapest. And it sounds light years better than what you're getting for this. Sometimes maybe convenience of it being a Walmart, you get what you pay for, so. All right, we'll see you over in those videos.